Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Jordan. Jordan is from England in the UK. So let's see what Jordan has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hello. Hello. Hello, Jordan. How are you? I'm not too bad, thank you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you so much for taking the time, the interview today, this evening. Thank you. No, thank you very much for having me. My God, look at your background, Madonna. Mm. Yes. <laughs> wow, I can't say you're a big fan. Oh, I'm a massive fan of her. I mean, she's um, she's on my arm as well. Oh my goodness, show me the, the show me see the, the tattoo. Let me see the tattoo. Is uh, oh wow, from the which from which is it Vogue? Vogue, well done. Very well, <laughs> very well informed. <laughs> Amazing. And tell me, so before we start the game, tell me a little bit about your passion about Madonna, how everything started. Um, I think just like everything in life, um, it all stems from probably childhood and influence. And um, my kind of influence, especially with music, was 90s music and divas of the 90s and, and people like that. So it's kind of just probably some of that was drummed into me from being a child. And I think there was a generation of people that grew up on her. Mm -hmm. um, my mum was that generation, so it kind of rubbed off on me a bit. <laughs> Do you remember the very first time when you listened to, to her song and you were like, my goodness, I like that. That's something um, catchy or different, special or not. It just came naturally with, um, with time. It came naturally, but I think probably my earliest memory of her, where I actually probably watched her, was probably when she did Me Against the Music with Britney and it was them two. And that was probably when I kind of fixated on these two characters in pop culture. And I was like, influenced me to go down, obviously my own route with music and stuff. But it was probably that, that was like, it was one legend and a new legend. And it was like, this is, this is everything. This is, this is a dream. I've been both of them, the concert. My first time I saw Madonna was the Reinvention Tour 2004. Oh, um, yeah. Portugal, I was literally very close to the stage and I remember when Vogue actually, one of the first songs was Vogue and when she came, it was like, my God, this is Madonna because she looks quite, you know, when you see the video clips, you think there's like a big woman, you know, she was she wasn't yeah. tiny, but kind of short. I was like, oh, this is Madonna. Yeah. But I literally was through the shows like, oh my God, that's it. It was impossible to blink an eye because every, every movement she was doing was just like amazing. Yeah, she, she's. I think. I think Madonna, unlike a lot of other artists, she's she's a performer. I think and an entertainer yeah. more more than she is a singer. Absolutely, people go to her concert for the whole, yeah. you know, concert, not the whole performance, not for the the, the like the the, um, the singing or you know, it's just the whole thing. It's just like, yeah. and Britney Spears. I saw it the same year actually as well. Um, Rock, Rock in Rio, Lisbon. I don't know if uh, it's like a. Uh, Rock in Rio, it's a um, festival that in the 80s they were doing Rio, just in Rio de Janeiro, I guess. Okay. Um, and so now they are doing around the world as well. And uh, it was different artists, and it was Britney Spears, Black Eyed Peas, Sugar Babes. Remember Sugar Babes? They, they oh, yes. 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 Yeah. So it was Sugar Babes before, Britney was afterwards. And I was like, oh my God. And um, it was when Toxic com was out, you know what I mean? She oh, came with it was amazing. I was like, wow, that's something. To... Just before she had the babes, you know, I mean, she was like the top top at the time. It's still anyway, but it was when she was like um, the very high level of music and everything. Jordan, so tell me where you're from. I'm from the northeast of England in a very tiny, tiny town called Newton Aircliffe, and no one even knows it. So I always tell people I'm from Durham because it's easier. From Der Devon? Devon. Durham. Durham, okay. And that's the place where you grew up and you've been raised? Yeah, I've been here all my life. I see. And what's the best part of living there? Um, well, I tell a lie. I lived in Leeds for two years um, and I moved back. And I think one thing that... It's one of those places where everyone who lives here hates it and we say it's a tiny town and nothing ever happens here. But I think when you move away and I've lived in a city like Leeds and then come back, it's kind of, it's home. And I think, I don't know if this is a, gen a generic thing, but um, people in the North tend to be a lot more friendlier. Um, and I, I kind of miss that element. And I think the best thing about being here is it has its positives and its negatives, but everyone does know who everyone is. 
Um, mm-hmm. So we've all kind of got each other's backs in a, in, in a bit of a way. It's humble. It's a very humble place to live. I see. It's like this. You have this com- uh, this community vibe. You know that yeah. if they're gonna have some support or people are gonna there for be there for you. And yeah. um, what do you do for a living, Jordan? Um, so I work with the police. That's what I do for um, for a living. Yes, I do. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've got like a I've got a few hobbies along the side. So I kind of like dabble in between a few different things. But that's that's like my main job. That's what I do. My God, I, I, you know what? I reached 600 interviews, um, I think two weeks ago. If I'm not wrong, you are my first policeman in the show, if I'm not wrong. Wow. <laughs> so many, I'm sorry if I, I miss someone, but I don't remember. Imagine, my goodness, a policeman. So tell me, what do you like the most about your job? What's what's the, the most uh, joy part of it? I think for me, I've worked since I was 13 and I've never had an office sit down job. I've always wanted something that would be challenging and different because what scares me about life in general is I'd hate to live a monotonous lifestyle. So I'd hate to do the same thing day in, day out on repeat. So I think with that, I've, I've never had one day that's the same. So I think um, it's challenging and it, it's, I see a side of the world that probably not everyone else sees or knows exists. And as bad as it can be sometimes, it's exciting as well. Absolutely. And uh, how far are you from London, uh, Jordan? Um, oh God, now you're testing my geography, which I failed, <laughs> by the way, in school. Um, I'm about five hours, I'd say. Okay, so it's not very close, I would say. Not, not very close, but then there's further places. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, so before we start um, our journey with the match bots, um, I would you like to tell me something interesting about yourself? Okay. I'm very boring. <laughs> I'm very vanilla. Um, I don't believe I'm boring at all. I don't believe that. <laughs> um, something interesting about myself. Hmm. Probably recently. Um, I managed to take part in um, a BBC upcoming drama, which was really exciting. Um, wow. Really, really exciting. Um, probably the most interesting thing to happen for, me for a very long time. Um, so I've managed to have a bit of filming experience with that. Um, it's not a massive part, but it's just, I was still part of it. And um, so yeah, that that's coming out in September, I think. Don't quote me on that. Are you allowed to say the name or not? Yeah, it was Happy Valley. It's a, um, it's a police drama with um, Sarah Lancashire, Siobhan Finneran. Um, so I've got the pleasure of meeting them, which oh, was wow. absolutely surreal. Um, but yeah, that 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 was quite an experience. It was it was something that just it was so sporadic and so random um, right. how it came about. So it was like just not planned at all, and everything kind of just happened really fast. And this was <laughs> two or three weeks, and I was like, I kind of walked away from it. And I look back now, and I'm like. As if I actually just did that, <laughs> so it's kind of like hasn't sunk in, hasn't sunk in. Very interesting. And you tell me before that you're boring, yeah? I don't see that boring at all. Mm. <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes I come. Right, Jordan, you're ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Of course. Amazing. Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So, this is my best friend. Run the fun questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to get a bit in the mood before the first question. Saying that, actually, I always play um, like different kind of music, like a Brazilian music, but I was checking your profile earlier on and I saw your tattoo with Madonna. I was like, no, I need to put a Madonna song. <laughs> <laughs> saying that, saying that, I, I was thinking, should I go to the 80s, to the 90s? I don't know, I didn't know any kind of music. And actually, saying that, I thought about the one with Britney Spears. But I said, no, you know what? I'm gonna take another one that I like a lot. And it always when I listen to it, I go like, I, it's impossible not to move a little bit or to, you know what I mean, have a go. When I'm the gym, like, this music come along, I go like, okay, let me look around, nobody, okay. <laughs> let's do it, I hope you like it. Good, you like that? I love that song, music. <laughs> yes, yes. I wish I had the copyrights to put it on the show. 
<laughs> Jordan, before you start the game, for the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, I always can change, okay? It's over, friend. First question for you is, tell, tell, tell us something that you have done that you feel very proud of yourself. I think probably in my work, standing out as a member of the LGBT community um, and being open about that, because I think for me, um, there was, I did a lot of work with um, local drag queens and um, the Freedom Quarter in Leeds City Centre and working with um, a lot of the gay nightclubs. Um, and I think it was something that they'd never experienced before. Um, just due to, I think, people have this perception that the police is such a straight masculine kind of environment. Um, but I think I've always had a bit of free will about me where I've never allowed that to define me in any in any sense of my life at all. Like I never actually had to sit down and come out. I just kind of said, this is me and this is, this is how I live. Like whether you like it or not. So I think being representative of myself and taking that into a career with so much stigma around it. Um, yeah. I think to be a standout for that and, and reaching that, that kind of community um, is some of that I still probably am very proud of doing. Um, even amazing. That's amazing uh, you saying that, George. I think it's a, it's a really, really good point. And I think it's, I'm so glad you, you touched this, uh, this part because as you said, there's a stigma there. And yeah. uh, you know, and I think even for yourself as well, it's a, it's a, a I'm sure, um, as you said, you, you've always been yourself and you didn't, know, you didn't have to come out or, uh, but I don't know, but maybe in the back of your mind, did you have this doubt that if they would find out or if knew it would kind of uh, be something that would stop you through your career or you, you literally felt comfortable and safe going through that when you applied for the job? Yeah, I mean, I think the kind of fearlessness was always there. I think from mm -hmm. having icons like this woman here and just many people like on my your mom, arm, on your arm, on my arm. <laughs> but I think just like I've always kind of just gone through life like a karate kid. So like nothing's ever really fazed me. So, but I think when it came to joining a team of officers and getting comfortable, because obviously I'm with those people absolutely in day out. It was scary to begin with, but I can honestly say hand on heart, I've been nothing but embraced by those people so it is they're, they're them kind of embracing me and really they don't care like the job is so fast paced and so fast moving no one's got time to care about who you sleep with or who you don't like it no one's bothered so i think it's something that i've never had to go to work thankfully because i know some people have i've never had to go to work and think about my sexuality it doesn't come at the forefront of my mind that's amazing. Uh, saying that, I had um, I had a, I have a friend that he's a policeman. He started a career as a policeman, and he told me once that uh, the, the LGBT community there just so many, and sometimes they were kind of doing like events between them, and there were like a lot of them. And he was so, as you said, he felt so like normal. He could be himself. He could express yeah. himself the way he is, and he never. Uh, never crossed his mind that uh, you know he did to behave somehow or to hide something because the support was there and as you said you just busy you're just going they want to see what you can do what you, your ability is not what you know what you really are you know what yeah. i mean very yeah. good point good one i'm glad to touch this this point next question let's do it Jordan from england next question for you is if you were in a circus which character would you like to be and why? The ringleader. <laughs> Tell me why. I think because I'm one of these people, I don't know, because I'm a Leo. So I've, I've kind of, I mean, I'm not completely on astronomy, but I do think there are some traits with star signs. And I think I do like sometimes to have direction and order with everything. Um, for example, when I was at college or university and we had like teamwork tasks to do, I'd find them really difficult because Sometimes if I have a sense of how things should run, I just want to get it done myself. And obviously the ringleader is in charge of making sure everything kind of goes and follows suit. So I think I'd be more suited to that. I have friends there, Leo, and I exactly know what you're talking about. They love yeah. being in charge. They don't like to give away things. I mean, they need to be in control of everything what's happening yeah. around. It has, its, it has its negatives, but then sometimes it gets the job done, so. What would be the negative negative part, in your opinion? 
Pardon? What would be the negative part of being a Leo in your opinion? I think clashing with other people. I think mm -hmm. um, it causes a lot of arguments sometimes. And I think because that's just how we are, I think we don't see any problem in our ways because we don't understand it. But I think when you're either in relationships or family members and it's it's kind of hard for them, but it's like, it's just me. <laughs> it's like, well, it's caused a lot of arguments and maybe trying to give room for other people. Um, instead of, like you say, taking control of situations all the time, it's, it's you, you can't do it all the time. It's You really can't. And when you, you can't, you just get in the mood to go like, you have this, this just goal. Out, just completely <laughs> kick off. <laughs> Next one. Okay, hey Jordan, before the next question, um, what do you like the most about your job? What's the, the, the best part of being a policeman? Um, and of course, there is always as well a challenging part, if you can share. So, I'd say it's getting to meet people from all walks of life. Because mm -hmm. what we were touching on before about being from this tiny town in the northeast of England, it is a heavily white British environment. So I'd never, ever met anyone from any other culture or religion or anything like that. And then I stepped foot into Leeds and it was like, wow, like this is a completely different world. And I think because of that and because of the people that I meet on a daily basis, it's brought me out of my shell with my own confidence and also like self-education and they've educated me. So I think like, honestly, hands down, above helping people and protecting people I think for me it's the people that are in the public and the people that I've met which have really touched my life and and brought kind of wisdom to it if you like and 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 an education and um so both the same answer would be for the positive and negative as well the negative part the challenging part of being a policeman I think the negative like I think everyone would probably agree is media coverage on our job. Um, the, I kind of always describe it as this job is like the celebrity of all jobs. You're documented, you are written on, you are written about, you've got a camera in your face. It's almost like being a celebrity sometimes. And I think people don't realize what we do behind the scenes. And people are very quick to judge and very quick to make comment. And the media just loves to soak up that negativity you never see police officer helps mental health victim or police officer sits for hours with a victim or it's always, you know, they've gone down the wrong street in a police vehicle. Oh my goodness. Like, you know, and it's just like, there's, there's, there's a narrative. And I think the media spin that narrative sometimes. And then that's why I always say, I don't blame the public for not liking us sometimes because if I read that about someone constantly, day in, day out, then it's going to spin my mindset, isn't it? And it's going to have an effect on me. Um, and uh, when you decide to start your career as a policeman, did your family support you? Oh, massively, massively. Um, I never had any problems with that, like, at all. Um, my family have always been supportive of, of all my decisions. Um, our family are kind of just, as long as everyone's happy, we don't really care. Um, so yeah. Good. Next question for you is, what was your best friend's name growing up and why did you consider then your this uh, best friend at the time your best friend? Why did you consider? Um, oh God, this is a good one. I'll tell you what, I've, I've, I've got a best friend and I can't really think of growing up because, well, I can actually, so growing up, childhood years my best friend was actually my uncle um there's only there's only two years between us um so my uncle was born in 1996 and i was born in 99 so there's a very close age gap between us yeah it's ridiculous <laughs> so growing up i never really had a best friend from school well i did because my uncle went to my school so but it was like i never had like a mate it was always me and my uncle we were inseparable um and we just grew up together um like we really did just grow up together. But I think kind of when I hit secondary school, um, my best friend, who's still my best friend to this day, she's called Annabelle and she is amazing. She is, oh, she's absolutely fantastic. She's this tall, massive ginger red hair. 
and she's just fearless and she is amazing and she just tells it as it, as it is and she's been my best friend since 2010 wow. um longest friendship i've ever had and um she's still my best friend to this day and i love her very much annabelle look look who he's saying look what he's saying i know i'm sure she's gonna be smiling oh no she'll sit this saying what are you talking about <laughs> Say that, what's the biggest similarity between you and her and what's the biggest difference? I think when I started secondary school in 2010, I was I was I was always outgoing in primary school, but I think secondary school was a different environment. Annabelle was quite the opposite. So Annabelle would say it how it was, she'd argue with anyone, and she'd always kind of back my corner. So I think like she brought that out of me. And um, then we just became inseparable. So I think um, the similarity between us now is just how outspoken we are and we'll just say it as it is. Um, mm -hmm. But I've really kind of got her to thank, especially going through school when bullying started. Um, yeah. Even if it's someone who was really popular in the school, she'd have no qualms and going up to them and saying like, who do you think you are? And then she kind of made me realize I can actually say that myself without having to run to her. So she's kind of, played a part in my own character development through school. I've never told her that actually, but, oh. she, did. She, but she did. She really did, if I think about it properly. Her smile is getting bigger and bigger now with her <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet, very sweet. I think some friends, they, they leave a big impact in our lives. Sometimes yeah. during the, at the time, as you said, you, don't, you didn't realize that, but when you grow up, you start to understand things you look back and go like, oh my God, that was someone special that I'm still glad that this person is around. Because yeah, it's, it's, I think it's definitely when you hit adult life, you start to realize that more. Yeah. I think when you're a kid and you're a teenager, you kind of take it for granted a bit and they're just your friend. But I think now, definitely on reflection, it's, it's yeah, she was a massive part of, of, of my growing up. Amazing. And she lives as well in the same town as you at the moment? Pardon? She lives the same place as you at the moment? Yeah, she does. She's only five minutes up the road. So. Um, Good. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, her life. I mean, she's her life is so different to mine. She's she's settled down. She's bought a house and she's got a career. And I tell you what, it's funny. We laugh at each other now when we say like, "When did we ever get careers? Like, when did we start growing up?" <laughs> Amazing. Next one. Next question for you, Jordan is: Share with us a crazy story that happened to you when you were a child at school. Crazy, crazy or funny? A crazy or funny situation from when I was at school. Throughout the whole of school or primary school. What? Yeah, anytime. Do, what do you think about like one of the memories um, at school? What comes to your mind? Did you like oh. school, by the way? Did you like going to school as a child, teenager? Primary school, yes. I've got a lot of happy memories from primary school. Secondary school was tough. And I think that was because kids nowadays are tough. And kids are really harsh. And my generation, I mean, my, my brother is in the last year of the same school I went to now, but even my generation, I feel, was so different to his. Um, that's when technology was starting to become accessible to my, to my generation. And I think it was harsh. It was really harsh. And I think, like just going off track a bit but kind of same but my brother now he's got a friend who is bisexual and it's fine to me at school that would have been a very different kettle of fish and very different and it's just it, it shows just within i mean me and my brother have seven years between us and it shows in that seven years how much has changed and i think i definitely found secondary school very tough um and i think i, I wish looking back i'd i don't know i wish i'd have stuck up for myself a little bit more and um yeah but I'm trying to think of that crazy situation. The only funny thing I can think of is when I was um, in primary school, because I was obsessed with her, um, I used to tell people, and I remember her name, she was called India Rodham, and um, she's a year above me. And I used to tell her in the whole school that my mum was Britney Spears. <laughs> And I can't tell you if anyone bought it, but I used to be like, yeah, I get dropped off by like bodyguards and stuff. And my mum's actually Britney Spears. <laughs> but my mum was blonde and fit and toned at the time. And I just used to be like, yeah, she's Britney Spears. 
<laughs> this funny, oh my god. Why? It's just one of those, why did I even think of saying that? <laughs> Amazing. Um, actually, again, when I check your profile, I could see, are you very close to your mom? I could see you sharing some pictures of her. Yeah. So there's only 18 years between me and my mom. So she had me very young. So I think in the 90s and the early 2000s, when I was growing up, she was still growing up as well. You know, she was younger than me now. So I think we kind of weirdly had part of our childhood at the same time. Um, and because of that, we've just kind of become best friends. Um, but yeah, it, 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 it's a good dynamic. It is a really good dynamic. It has its bad dynamics sometimes, but it, it, it has it, it has its positives as well. One thing, uh, one coincidence between you and me, my mom as well, she had me when she was 18 years old. And I could tell you so many situations where they thought I was her cousin, she was my cousin. My dad as well is very young. My dad, I think he was 21 or 22, I don't remember, but they're both parents very young. And I remember so many situations where People, they were like, oh my God, this is your cousin introduced to me. And I was like, this is my mom. And she was like, oh my God, really? I said, yes, yeah. my mom. So I remember, we always had this situation. Saying that, the last one I'm going to share with you. Uh, my mom came uh, to England for the first time. Uh, the only time she came when she turned 50, 50, her fifth first birthday was a present. And I organized a trip. We did some tours around in Europe and went to Paris, me and her. And um, so we went to the uh, Eiffel Tower, and it's impossible to forget this situation because we were in the Eiffel Tower. So we went to Eiffel Tower, we were on the top of Eiffel Tower, like take some pictures, was kind of, you know, a lot of tourists, of course. Um, it was like, um, so the sun sunset was starting, it was kind of almost evening. So yeah, a lot of tourists in one point. Um, she was walking in front of me, the top there, and uh, this couple, uh, the lady, kind of crossed in front of, uh, between me and her, and this lady, her boyfriend, pulled her back, said, oh, left her husband pass first. He thought I was my mom's husband. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I was like, I look at him, I was like, she's my mom. And he was like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I said, no, 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 no. It's her birthday. You just destroyed my day, but you made her day. So it's fine. She's my mom. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. And she didn't understand my mom. She was I said, why, why are you talking? What are you laughing? I said, because he thought I was your husband. She was <laughs> like, oh, really? I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> See, I can second that because my mum's still very young at heart and she's still in pristine condition, which she won't agree with, but she is. Um, so when we go out together, we, we sometimes go drinking together. So if we're in the club, people are like, oh, I didn't realize, like, oh, you brought your girlfriend. And I'm like, no, oh, this is my mum. Like, it's a compliment for, for, for her, I guess. But for me, it's like, it's strange, uh, isn't it? It's strange to... I don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's always a... I had, I had someone on the show as well, and they had uh, he had young parents. Somehow, as you said, somehow they grew up with us, you know what I mean? Somehow you see some, you know, you get close to them because they were parents very young, and for them they were still learning how to, you know what I mean, to be an adult somehow. Yeah. You know what I mean? And suddenly you had a child, so it's a lot of responsibilities. And uh, I yeah. think they become, they always going to be young because they, they didn't have that youngest during the time because when people yeah. were kind of living their lives somehow, they were already with a child. There were a lot of responsibilities. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I agree with that. Next question. Let's do it. I was waiting for this beat. <laughs> Next question for you is, what is your favorite place in the entire world and why? Ooh. Favorite place in the entire world. Now you've got me on the spot here. Honestly, hand on heart, probably home. That is going to sound so cringy, but it really is. It's like I say, I've, I've, had, that, I've had that experience of life of moving away from home and it was the worst, worst thing ever. Um, and there was nothing more humble than coming off the motorway and seeing the sign for my hometown. So I think no matter where I am, it's always good to be back home. And I think that's just, yeah. Home is just where, they, they always say home is where the heart is. And I think it really is. You know, it's, it's, it's always nice to just come home at the end of the day. I think home is a safe place to be. You know, you, you find yeah. your safety there and you feel protected as well. There, yeah. As they say, there's no place like home. Never. No, there's not. There's not. There, there really isn't. I mean, if you're asking, though, if I could go anywhere, 
I'd love to go to LA or Calif like in California. I'd love to go just just to experience America. Um, I went when I was a kid to Florida, and I can't remember anything about it. But I think like now I'm an adult, I think I'd love to appreciate just maybe spending like a week in America or two oh, weeks and just just seeing what it's like. And why LA, California? Why the the, the fascination? Everyone goes to New York, and everyone wants to do this, and everyone wants to do that. I think I'd just like to go there, um, in the summer. And just kind of like live like a local kind of thing, like just try the different restaurants and their way of life, and you know, and LA is beautiful, like it really is. It is it's a beautiful place, and um, yeah, it's kind of like central, but it's not. It's kind of like as as, an, as a British person, I think when you think of America, I always think of somewhere like LA. Um, so kind of like like an American would think of London. I'd, I always think of LA for some reason. So. Yeah. For me, it's New York. <laughs> Nothing about the reason. I'd love to go for the sightseeing purposes, but I think, like, I don't know. I think I'd, I'd like to do that later on. <laughs> Very good. Next one. Let's do it. Madonna, Madonna. Right. So, uh, before the next question, as I could see, you know, besides Madonna's, uh, you have Madonna's uh, tattoo. Tell me a little bit about the other ones. You have some in your um, in your things as well. Tell me a little bit about your tattoos. What's so, there? so this is a crown. I got this in Turkey in Antalya, and it was a drunken tattoo. Can you put a bit up, please? I don't think I can see. Oh yeah, I can see now. Yeah, I can see now. Yep. That's okay. a crown. Um, that is cream, which is um, it's like a. So you've got like Ministry of Sound, which is like a, a music kind of thing. Um, cream was the same. So you've got like cream anthems, and and obviously there's the Cream Fields Festival. Um, right. Music is a big part of my life, so I've got the cream logo. Um, that's the Leo symbol, the star sign. Yeah. Um, it's just the J for Jordan. <laughs> How old were you when you had the first one? I went to Antalya in 2019, so I was 19 years old. Oh, wow. And which one was the first? The crown was the first one. The crown was the first, I yeah. see. And when was the Madonna's one? When did you have it? Um, Madonna was in 2018, so I was... I think I was 18 years old. Oh, wow, wow, very good. Next question is, what do you think people need to know about each other before they start a relationship? Oh, wow. Um, I think before people start a relationship, I think what you should know about each other is firstly, and I think this is so important, is not to have a pre judgment from what other people have to say about that person you know I've got some friends who people would tell me they're horrible they're this they're that blah 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 and actually you know if I ran with a pre a, a pre kind of conception of that person um they wouldn't be my friend but it's just like I think that that's one thing especially with the world of social media and how quick it is to try and cancel somebody um I always think people don't talk facts about someone. It's always gossip. And I always think, and I say this like wholeheartedly, I always think you should allow someone else to get to know that person um, and let them figure it out for themselves. Being a gay a gay guy in your city, do you think, or the gay community uh, around, do you think it's easy to have a relationship? It's, it's, it's what, sorry? It's easy to have a, a gay relationship with the area where you live or, um, um, you know, uh, for example, I live in a very big city like London, you know what I mean? There is always, it's most of, we have this, this stigma of it's difficult to have a relationship because, you know, it's, it can be easy. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I think definitely with regards to, well, like first kind of looking geographically, there's definitely more option to have a relationship in somewhere like Leeds than there is somewhere up here. Um, and I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just because of the different culture. I think, like I said, kind of at the beginning, I live in, in County Durham and in the Northeast. I'd never experienced other culture. So it would probably make me less inclined to want to come out in a place like this. But I think if you were brought up or lived in somewhere like Leeds, I think because it's it's that much in your face every day, I think you'd probably have a different mindset. I think for me personally, like, again kind of running with that i just don't care like i really don't like i'd start a relationship anywhere but i mean i just i don't know i, I get what you're saying though i think it's hard because 
I know that there will be, and it's really sad, and I always think about this sometimes, there will be officers who won't come out or don't come out because of the environment. And I can only comment on my own personal experiences. My personal experiences with the police and my sexuality has been nothing but positive. Mm -hmm. But I know that that's not the case for everyone. And I think it would be very narrow-minded for me to say that, you know, oh, it's, it's fantastic, it's great, blah, blah, blah. There are issues in places and there are issues across the country. And that must be heartbreaking for those people, especially those people who are living a life with a woman or, you know, lesbian women who are living lives with a man. Like, it must be so difficult and so hard. Um, and that, that definitely would be probably because of the environment we work in and like you say, it could be geographically as well. Saying that, what would be your best piece of advice for people maybe watch the interview and they are trapped because of society, because of religion, because of, you know, it could be a lot of things. What would be your advice for those people already in this situation that they cannot come out for a few reasons? The best advice I would say, because I'd never sit here and say someone should come out. I don't agree with that, but I always think it's healthy. Um, to have a peer that you can that you can kind of divulge and someone that you trust you know mm -hmm. and but choose that care like choose that person carefully is what i'm saying mm -hmm. i think if you walk around with that on your shoulders like one you've got all the strength in the world if you can do that because i couldn't do that so i do i actually hold my hats off to people who don't come out because i think to be able to carry that around for so long takes some bloody courage and it does but i think even if you don't want to come out or you're not ready to always find a peer just someone who does know that you can just vent to every now and again someone mm -hmm. that you trust i see and uh, for you personally for you uh jordan being a good looking guy uh, as you are do you think it's um it's difficult people they have this stigma or do you think it's a plus for you what being good looking as you said i mean yeah i, like, I, don't, I don't think i am i actually really don't think i am i'm one of these people there's so many guys that i see on social media where i think i wish i looked like you and not like me but i think when for, for example i'm quite um i post a lot of um social media kind of content and stuff and i do share a lot of that stuff i think people think that there's an ego that comes with it and that's the negative. So, you know, people would see taking selfies as vanity or they'd see it as, you know, you're full of yourself or you love yourself. And I think that that is really toxic. And that's one thing about social media that really pisses me off right now is like self-confidence isn't worth anything anymore. You're seen as, yeah, you've got an ego or you're full of yourself just because you might be slightly attractive. And that's not the case at all. Um, I'd, I actually have a lot of like insecurities about myself and like many other people do. And I think it's kind of, I've, I've never posted a picture thinking that I look absolutely amazing. I post it because I might have a day where I feel really bad, but if I can reflect and look at myself and think, well, remember when you looked like that, that day and you felt happy, try and get back to that sometimes. So I think it's kind of, and I think self-love is important. And I think that's not, we haven't got enough of it. Like people are so hecked up on finding relationships or OnlyFans accounts, trying to get gratification off other people. And, you know, it, it, it shouldn't be about that. It should just be a case of, if you think you look absolutely amazing or sexy, then go for it. Like, why not? Like, who really cares? Like, I just think if, you know, if you think you look great, then go for it. And I, I personally buzz off seeing people happy in themselves. Like I really do. I totally agree. I think there are no rules. As long as you are express yourself, make you feel happy. As you said, sometimes you are shy and you put a nice picture. Just it's like a, it's like a way of for you to put, you know, to try to uh, get away of your of your fear, of your insecurities. You know what I mean? And if you sometimes some days you feel like, oh my god, I feel nice. I look nice. Why not? You know what I mean? And of yeah. course. Whatever you post, like, there's always the people they're gonna judge somehow. Even if you put a picture about something positive, but there's always someone that's not gonna agree, and it's okay as well. It's okay, you know what I mean. I think if everyone would like that, or would like it, would be boring. You need those people as well to make you think, wonder, and yeah. see that there are always different points of views on it for sure. And it kind of goes back to what we said before when you asked about kind of advice on 
people when they're getting in relationships or getting to know someone like that's where it's toxic because someone could know me from social media and say to someone else oh he's full of himself he posts pictures all the time blah 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 and i think like this is what this is what's really toxic about social media now like i wholeheartedly do not post anything for the likes or for the followers or because i care about what other people think i post it because i feel nice and i don't need clarification from other people you know yeah. clarification is a bonus like and likes are a bonus but I, I i couldn't give a crap and people really think you are though people really think like you you love that and it's like i really don't they couldn't be more wrong People think like that they they because they wanted to be you or sometimes because they admire you and they don't know how to um, uh, to um, understand that they are just different kind of people the ones who is going to see you like express yourself happy and they're gonna be happy as well and the other parties they like that but somehow they, their ego doesn't like so they kind of express in a negative way that's what I believe I think like the own my own community like the gay community can be just as toxic with that as well. It yeah. can be a really toxic yeah. environment. Like, I hate categorizing, and you know, people have so many different names for body types, and like, yeah, you know, people are like, what are you? Are you a twink? Are you a jock? Are you this? It's like, it's like, well, I'm just a human being with five fingers and five toes, like, you know, five things on each hand. Like, last time I checked, and like, I hate that. <laughs> I, hate the, I hate the labels, and this is what annoys me sometimes is like, we're a community about not wanting to be oppressed and not wanting to be subcategorize and put it and, and and kind of cast aside from the rest of society yeah. but then we do it to ourselves and that really i've never understood that concept ever i see that ready for another one go for it let's do it it's going to be difficult for me to sleep tonight if this song play around my head <laughs> <laughs> your fault jordan Sorry, Next I'll one. Say, <laughs> if you had 24 hours of life, what would you do? Ooh. I want to be with my family. Definitely. But I think like I just I just want to to be honest with you. So let's say when the clock struck midnight would be the time I'd want to end it in a nightclub, just dancing and just being free and just I'd want to go for a big drive with my music blasting. I'd want to go out to a club and just dance and I'd want to order a takeaway. I just want to do like all the fun things probably for the last 24 hours. Wow. And you could, let's say those two 24 hours, you could, you, you could listen to three Madonna song. Which one is at the top three favorite ones? Definitely hung up. Um, into the groove and probably Vogue. Amazing, amazing. Party anthems, party you anthems. Went, you went to the eighties, the nineties, the two thousand, like. I think it was every ego there, wasn't there? <laughs> good one, yeah, very good. <laughs> Next question. Come together. Right, uh, before the next question, uh, as you mentioned before about uh, you post some pictures, um, you know what I mean, like express yourself. Do you work as a model as well? Do you, um, are you an artist as well? Or is it just, just a way of expressing yourself? Um, never modeled, never ever modeled in my life. Um, I don't think it's something that I would do. I mean, I, I might be confident personally. And I think, again, going back to being a Leo, I have control of that. Mm -hmm. And I think I can control how I want to pose and how I want and when I want to do it. I think being a model, it would be really kind of demanding and I wouldn't like that. Um, but I think, and, and the whole artistry kind of thing is, um, I'm currently working on music um, in the background and I'm recording an EP, which is really exciting. Um, and I make music, I've made music since I was 13. Um, so it's kind of like, yes, self-expression, but um, I'm going to see where it, where it kind of leads, you know, where it kind of goes to. Um, you know, I, I had that little dabble in, in the TV kind of industry, which was really exciting. And I kind of just thought, Maybe there's like other things in life that I could do as well um, and see where it leads. Absolutely. I think life is always an open book with a lot of opportunities, but you, exactly. need to be, you just need to explore, you know what I mean? It's nice to 
explore different areas, you know, expose yourself. You never know what's what's waiting for you. And sometimes life takes takes us in a direction that you're not expecting. Do you know what I mean? But for that to happen, you need to be open. You need to be approachable. And whatever comes, but look for it as well. You know, try something different. Go, you know what I mean? Taste something. You never know. You might like it. You might change, you know, your perspective in life. So those music is just a way of you express yourself. We always, as you said, you always being connected to music. I've always been connected to music, but I always made remixes of other artists' songs. And then I started writing stuff that I kind of thought like, this is this is really good. And like, I don't want to remix other people's songs anymore. I kind of want to do something for me. And right. I think like a lot of the songs I've written, some of them are quite personal. And um, it's kind of been a healing process in, 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 in its own little weird way. Um, but some of it, I just thought, you know, this could be massive. This could be a really good track. Um, like there's one track that I've written, um, and we've actually got an instrumental and everything for it now. And it's it's a very good dance pop kind of. Um, oh, wow! Track. I just think like, like I always think ahead, and I think if someone like you know someone sang this, this would be huge. And then wow. I just thought, you know what? Like, I've, it's like I've written this and I've produced this, like, and I just thought I'm going to start releasing them. So. I'm going to see where it ends up. I haven't physically released anything yet because everything's kind of still in the demo kind of stage, but um, it's exciting stuff. It's 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 really exciting stuff. Please let me know when it's out or when you're about to go out. I'd like to, to you know what I mean, to see it, to, to listen to you. Of course. For sure. Next question is, what makes you most uncomfortable about yourself? Probably... And it sounds so silly, but probably like physically, my arms, the biggest insecurity ever. Sounds so random, my arms. So you'll never see me wearing a t-shirt like this out and about in public. It doesn't happen unless it's an oversized t-shirt. Um, that's Why probably like that? my biggest insecurity. Why? Because they're really small, like they're really slim and it sounds so stupid and so kind of like... <laughs> naive but I've, I don't know like I've, I've got good legs and then like an all right kind of stomach and then I've just got these little weedy arms I just hang <laughs> off the top of my torso and like I've never been able to like gain weight or, or anything probably to be fair I just haven't put enough effort in but then I just like when I was going to the gym and I was kind of the opposite to everyone so everyone always says like your legs are the like the hardest and then your arms are easy I'm the other way around like and it's just it's something that I hate like I don't know, just in photos, I have to angle myself in a weird way because I don't want my arms out. And then it's a whole <laughs> kind of thing. But um, it's like walking around, even on holiday, like topless on the beach is the most, I w I'll do it because I'm on holiday. Mm -hmm. And um, but it, it, it's the worst thing for me to do. Interesting. Wow, interesting. Never, never, never met anyone who had some kind of insecurities yeah. with their arms. Yeah, that, that's wow. honestly, if I could change that tomorrow, I'd be a happy person. <laughs> <laughs> I think you need to work on it somehow in a different way yeah. or, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. Three questions left for you, Jordan. Let's do it. Wow. Next question for you is, would you rather be invisible or be able to fly? And what would you do? I would rather be invisible. Tell me why. Because uh, I know it sounds so bad, but I think it would allow you to go and physically find out who you need to be wary of, um, who might be talking behind your back, <laughs> and who to cut out. Um, but I think, like, I don't know. I just think it, it flying is very kind of everyone like superman can fly that's kind of overrated but i think like just um it would be good to just maybe sometimes hide away as well and just kind of spend the day kind of being anonymous um would be quite yeah it would be quite quite exciting walk naked around the street like just well, naked. see and no one would know and then the filter comes off and it's like crap <laughs> you go like oops oops oh my god I don't know. <laughs> Let's say you have the power of being visible right now. Where would you go if you could be like in a in a in a place that it's 
impossible to be because you know just impossible where would you be let's say for half an hour somewhere impossible if you could be invisible to be there i'd go to buckingham palace oh no it'd be windsor castle now and i'd just go and see what the queen got up to on an evening <laughs> does she sit there picking her feet watching coronation street or you know what does she get up to i'd love to know i would really love to know Imagine spend half an hour with her, like without. Oh my God! Imagine how amazing. Like, just sat, just sat on the couch next to the Queen for half an hour, yeah. Nor, not more than never after she turned seventy years celebration of the Platinum Jubilee. Can you imagine? My goodness, it's it feels so nice first to be alive, like to be experienced this time, and also being here in England for me as a foreign person from Brazil, being here. You know, in this moment, it's just like, my God, it's it is, it's just like, it's never going to happen again. I think it was, yeah, it's, I mean, it's never happened before. And yes. I think it, it it might never happen again for, well, ever. And yeah. I just think, you know, I, I just, it, it kind of made you proud to be British. And I mean, I know a lot of other countries have royal families, but it's just quite amazing that our royal family is kind of the most famous royal family. I mean, I have my favourite royals. And but I do respect the Queen. I really do respect the Queen. Who is your favorite royal? Diana. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> but um, yeah, she is. Yeah, she's a massive influence to me. Is um, is Diana? It's. I always I strongly believe that people they see the royal family before Diana and after Diana. She just brought this spice, beautiful, you know, everything. To, to know what I mean, um, to the royal family and to the world, I think, uh, yeah, it's never going to be another one as well, that's for sure. She yeah. was just unique, perfect, yeah. Two questions left, Jordan, let's do it. Before the next question, um, for those two, two years that the world, you know, went upside down regarding the COVID crisis, for you personally, the the biggest positive impact that brought to your life, to your personal life, and also the most negative one, if you can share? Um, the most positive, I think, probably a sense of unity for the first time ever in the country, um, oh. probably since the war. I, I feel like we live in a society now where everyone's greedy and out for themselves and it's actually quite a sad world that we live in now, I think, and I wish something would change. But I think probably since the war was the first time I felt like the country pulled together. Uh, all of us stood on our doorsteps at seven o'clock, clapping the NHS or, you know, in the summer, people sat in the gardens, like talking to each other. Like, we don't do that now, even though we're free, like from lockdown. But I think like that was probably the only time in my lifetime I've ever seen the country kind of like pull together and the NHS, the police, we were all heroes and it was, it was nice. It was really nice. It, it was. I see. Okay. Next question for you is how would you describe a perfect, healthy relationship? But I think we talked about that before in a previous question about relationship. I'm going to skip this one. I'm yeah. going to get Okay, next question is, what do you like the most in your best friends or about your best friends? Um, I probably touched on this one before as well. Probably just how outspoken she is and fearless she is. I mean, like, I've watched her on a night out run and I mean sprint in an eight-inch pair of heels and I just think, like, that is the most fantastic thing I've ever seen, like, I wish people could meet her because she's just like, every time I have like an event or a birthday, I always invite her because, I mean, she's my best friend, but I just want everyone to meet her because she's like, you know, I tell people at work about her and stuff and she's just, she just embodies this kind of like fun personality that she's, she's a nice person to be around. And she's one of those people in life where people say surround yourself with kind of positive people. And she's kind of just one of those people. She's just someone that, you know, she'll tell you if you've been an idiot she'll she'll tell you it blunt and straight she won't beat around the bush and um she's good to have in life wow i'd love to have to have her on the magic box maybe <laughs> oh, one day oh she'd love it she's brilliant 
there we go. You are you are in charge of trying to get me her, to get her here. Okay. <laughs> Ready for the last one? Yeah, go for it. Last question. By the way. But before the last one, people watch the interview. Would you like to start a career um, as a policeman or you know the police fields? Um, what would be your best piece of advice for anyone who wants to join? Is whatever you see on the telly, get that out of your head. Whatever you see in police dramas, get it out of your head because it's nothing like real life. And just if it's some, it's it, it's such a bittersweet career. And it is challenging. And I do think you've got to have a certain type of personality to have it. But for anyone who wants to join it, just go for it because you won't regret it. It is, it's a job for life. And it is utterly amazing. Very good. Last question for you is, what's your idea of a perfect day? Day. Day, yeah. Um... Probably just like I'm a very social person, so for me it would be hot weather in the summer, beer garden with friends, um, or even just like sat in a garden with friends, just around the fire, just talking, um, and then finishing it off in a nightclub. Like I'm, I've made myself sound like such a party animal. I'm really not. I hardly ever go out, but I just think like you know. I love that interaction. I, I mean, when it comes to nights out and stuff with friends, I'm very, like, I'm a night drinker. I don't like drinking in the day. But um, I just think, like, I love dancing and being around music and being with friends. And I think um, just a day with my friends doing something like that, which is something that I don't do often enough. But um, that that would be my perfect day. Amazing. Right, so not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game, okay? I'm going to give away some words. Just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking, okay? So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Let's start with family. My mom. Money. My cars. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Heartbreak. Can be. Life. High expectations. Mm. Sex. The gay community. <laughs> <laughs> Not to be more specific, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> we love it. <laughs> Politics. Dictatorship. Religion. Knowledge. Fear. Being alone. Friendship. Annabelle. Oh. <laughs> Desire. Music. Regret. Um, my dad. Sorry. Wish. Money. <laughs> <laughs> money, money, must be funny. <laughs> Hap <laughs> happiness. Um, money. My, 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 yeah, but my uh, my little sister. Oh wow! Also, you have you have two siblings, one brother and one sister. I do. Yes. You are the middle one. Pardon? You are the middle or the oldest? Um, I'm the oldest. So my brother's middle child and my sister is the youngest and she is muddy coddle and she is the apple to everyone's eye. Oh, one word for it, England. The royal family, the queen. And one word for the royal family. One word for the royal family, Diana. <laughs> <laughs>
Beautiful, I love that, I love it. Um, one word for Madonna. Controversial. She says once, I think I was watching one of her speeches, she, I think she wants something, she said. Another one, another one. So you tell me then. It was the, she won Billboard Woman of the Year in 2016, 2015, and she said, People think I'm so controversial, but the most controversial thing I've ever done is to stick around. Wow, wow, you spoke the same way as you said. I, I, I watched that like a few times because it was so powerful to see. It's a really my, empowering line. Yeah. God, my God, it was just like, wow, this is Madonna. Yeah. She'll be very happy to watch the interview and to know that, okay? Yeah, she better, she better watch this. <laughs> and the last one now, policeman, one word. Underappreciated. All right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a train now. I'm not gonna go all the way to where you live. I'm gonna meet Annabelle for a <laughs> coffee, and I'm going to ask her. Tell me the most beautiful thing about Jordan, and tell me something that he still needs to work on to improve on. What she would say? What well, she would say? I think she would say the most beautiful thing about me is probably my resilience to just carry on through life no matter what it's thrown at me because that's one thing I love about her as well and I think one thing to work on would probably just be to not try and please people all the time and just you know as Diana said do things differently and don't go by a rule book and lead with the heart not the head If I would ask the same question to your lovely mom, would it be the same answer? It would be something similar. I think she probably, definitely the same thing about, the best thing about me is probably my resilience. And I think she'd probably say, just me to be more confident with my own decisions, because as much as I like to be in charge, sometimes I'm, I just make wrong decisions or sometimes I've got really good ideas and I just don't follow through with them out of fear and insecurity. I think I said wrong. I didn't want to ask the same question to your mom, Britney Spears, because Britney Spears is your mom. <laughs> <laughs> she'd say security, and then she'd organize a restraining order. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play now, Jordan and the magic box, and you can ask me a question. You can ask me a question now, Jordan. Question for you is, if you could have anyone living, dead, famous, not famous, on the magic box, Who would it be and why? I love the question. I love the question. The first person that came to my mind straight away is Prince William. And, wow. I, and I tell you why. I always admire him. I don't know why. I always, I don't know if something connects with Diana. When I see him speaking, when I see him express himself, There is something there about Diana. There is some, I don't know, the way he, you know, uh, there is, I don't know, because uh, his parents had the trouble in, a, you know what I mean, uh, in a marriage. I think he's trying the best to be different and he's doing so well. It's so, it's, I feel so happy to see him like happy with his family, his, you know, his kids. Yeah. But I don't know, I just always, when I, I look it up to him, when I see him talking or express somehow and the way he, He's very, um, he's approachable somehow. You can feel there's some warmth there, you know what I mean? The way um, he, he speaks, the way he talks. I don't know, there's something genuine about his personality there. And I always, I always admire that. And um, saying that, we were born the same year, me and him actually, but he's old. Oh. Yeah, he's older. And he's uh, from June and I'm from November. But I once asked my mom if she named me after him because he was uh, born before. And I was like, she was like, no, 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 it wasn't. But yeah, I always had admiration for um, Prince William. Um, you know, I always had this, um, this, I just look at him, I just see some, uh, even Diana's way of saying, or Diana's, he kind of uh, continues her legacy somehow. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I, I, I feel that, I feel that. So yeah, I think I would have Prince William and I'm hope one day, He'll be here with me doing the same interaction. Yeah. I'll be I'll be completely like shaky. I'll be completely nervous. But I'd love Bye. to have I'd love to have him. Um, you know, on the magic box. I think it would be amazing to have someone. So the future. Imagine the future king of England here in the magic box. 
Oh and my then, god. It'll be great. I mean, I think what you're saying definitely like the whole family unit with him, Kate and the kids, it's 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 beautiful. It's kind of remin it's reminiscent for me of um the king's dad. Um because the queen's dad, sorry, when he was king, obviously we had the queen mother, Princess Elizabeth and Princess Margaret. So it's kind of the similar kind of the family kind of unit, um, which is something we haven't seen for a long time, I don't think. Yeah, and he's somehow he's leaving again the legacy of his mom. You know what I mean, Princess Diana, and also as well he's uh, he's you can see some genuine there. You know he's uh, uh, under a lot of pressure all the time because you know he was born to be the, the you know the king. Yeah. I think his life is about that, and I think uh, when Harry talks about him, I have a lot of compassion about my brother because you know he's he has no choice the way he need, and he's doing well. I think he's doing very well, very popular. I think people likes I think people like him and uh, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Prince William for sure I'd love. And I could tell you like a lot of big lists as well, but I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll leave him as my first one for sure. <laughs> Jordan, actually, uh, when is what means Cole Tower is the name of your profile? What it means? That is my surname. So oh, it's, I... um, yeah, so it's it's Coulthard because obviously I've I'm kind of taking that account down the music kind of thing. My stage name is just gonna mm -hmm. be my surname. Um, when I sell music and um, publish myself as an artist, it'll be just my surname. Both um, hard. I think it's like a unique name. I've, ne I've never met anyone with the same surname. It is. So um, I just thought I'd go with it. And then the little, I've got the little line through the O just to be a bit weird and a bit different. <laughs> it works really well because when I saw your profile and I, I was looking around, I was like, oh my God, is his name or is just like a, 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 an artist's name? I was, I, and now I saw again on the screen, I was yeah. like, oh, let me ask him. Jordan, thank you so much for the interview. My goodness, it's so nice to talk to someone humble, someone who, you know what I mean? Um, as I said, when sometimes when you look um, at people's profile and uh, you kind of make an impression, which is normal, you know what I mean? Could be thank positive you. or negative, it doesn't matter, but you make it up an impression. And uh, when I look at your profile, I was like, oh, wow, that's, I even was a bit surprised when you, re when you replied back, I was like, you're not gonna reply. But it did, it did. And it's very sweet of you, I can see, you know, you're very, transparent or kind or sweet or approachable you know it's not about um uh, you know about yourself express yourself th there because you know there's always a, a, and i'm so that's what i like the most about the magic box because when i i literally invite random people online and of course i have an impression and always i have a, a positive impression and when i get to to get to talk to them i go like my god they they have so much to share it's so interesting to see you know people living a life and uh thanks so much for being kind and uh to accept my invitation uh be part of the show to bring your beauty to the show <laughs> <laughs> well thank you very much for having me it's, it, honestly it has been a pleasure it really has and before you go if you can share a positive message or a positive quote something that you live by okay so actually i was i was asked this when i did a few questions on instagram um the other day someone asked me about overcoming self-worth and mental health problems. And I always say this, always say this, and it's a bit of tough love, but just it's, it, it's, it's a quote I live by and it's the world doesn't stop just because you do. Just because you have a down day or a day where you feel rubbish, everything keeps moving around you and you've just got to keep moving with it. And no one's going to pull you out with that but you. Wow, 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 powerful, yeah, yeah. When my friends start complaining about something, I go like, you know what? The world's not around you. The world doesn't go around you. I always say that to them everything because it's true. Keeps, you know? Everything still keeps moving. Cars don't stop and planes don't stop flying. There we go. There we go. And if the birds doesn't stop singing because it's raining, they always, you know, there's always, and I totally agree. I think we sometimes we need to, it's a reminder sometimes, a reminder for us to see that uh, there are so many people in different... It's a harsh reminder as well that no one's going to do it for you as well. You know, it's good to have people to talk to and peers. And, I, and you know, I if I've got an ear for, for anyone, if anyone wants to share the problems, I'll, I'll voice note them, I talk to them, but I just think, like, no one's going to get you out of that but yourself. And that, that, that's, it's harsh, but it's true. It's true. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's you who is going to deal with. It's you who is going to kind of, you know, put, pick yourself up and uh, deal with the situation. It's manifestation. Sure. it's manifestation. If you want to do something, then you'll yeah. do it. Thank you very much, and I'll see you sometime in London or somewhere in Leeds, okay? It was a pleasure, okay? Keep in touch, Jordan. Take care, okay? Well, thank you very much for having me. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, 
share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show. And I see you there. Bye-bye. See you next time.